This video is sponsored by my good friends at Sage Accounting. If you do not know who Sage is, I am about to change your side hustle life. As we know, managing your personal finances and managing your business finances are two very different things. When it comes to your business, you are thinking about your cash flow, you are thinking about your invoices, and trying to make sure that you pay people on time and that they pay you on time. And for that, you need to keep track of all of your money and know exactly where all your business's money is, where it is being spent and how it is being spent. And for that, you need to have a reliable accounting software. And I have been using Sage for the past year since I started working with them and it has been incredible, guys. I have never felt like I have been this much on top of my business finances than I have since I started actually tracking it and making sure that all of my accounting is sound. So I highly recommend that you guys check them out and they've been so kind as to give us 30 days free when you sign up with the link in the description sure. or when so. you sign up for a Sage Accounting, use my affiliate referral code freedom and you will get your 30 days free. But obviously the easiest way is to just click on the link in the description. Thank you so much guys and let's move on to this video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am joined by a guest. His name is Frugal Local. He is famous not only for his coffee but also for his businesses that he runs in tech. He also is a personal finance content creator and just an overall awesome dad recent dad by the way so congratulations to him i'm really really excited to have him today because we're going to be talking about all things business how do you get to a point where you can take your side hustle from something that you do after your job to something that you can do full time so frugal would you mind introducing yourself to my beautiful audience hi everybody i'm frugal Oh, that's a little bit too frugal. Okay, let me expand a bit. So um, I'm Frugal Local. Uh, I'm a content creator and I've been writing about um, personal finance, property and small businesses now for three years, uh, just over three years. And um, well, I've got a couple of businesses. I love having many small businesses, you know, because I think in personal finance and in small businesses, we need to diversify our risks. Yes, we want to specialize in some things, right? But we also need to make sure that if something does happen, that we're going to be okay. So, uh, I, like you've mentioned, uh, I'm the content creator. I also work uh, in software development. I do software development, de development myself. I do IT project management. I'm a think tank partner, which means that if you have a business idea you get me in there and I'll help you get your business off the ground um, because I think that there's a lot of people you know they focus on great business ideas and then they focus on um, people that have established businesses and we see blog posts and content about that quite a lot but what about those people that just need the start momentum and that for me is very much where I focus my software development when it comes to minimum viable products and actually just helping those people that really just don't know how do I get the ball rolling. I think that's a question basically in every in every field whether that is personal finance whether that is business people always want to know how do they actually start because starting is obviously the most overwhelming step I think because you don't necessarily know what's the first thing you should do um, speaking about not knowing what you should do the reason I have Frugal Local joining us in today's video is I want to talk about his experience moving from a nine to five to being full, a full-time employee. So maybe let's start with when you are running your business as a side hustle and why you decided that you wanted to take this full-time. So um, as the people on Twitter would know um, and from some of my other platforms, um, I was in a, in a toxic work environment. And I don't say that lightly. Um, and what I did is um, I had a mental breakdown. I just could not take the abuse any longer. And I realized then that I'm gonna have to get out. Now, I had this joke where I was saying, I'm an entrepreneur in, a, um, in the body of, a, of an employee. And I had to get the inner entrepreneur out. So what I did is I started uh, in that time I started to actually build clients and build a 
business as in the form of a side hustle and something, you know, what do you call it, a side business. Um, and I grew the business in that year um, and get a plan in place so that in after a year, I was able to resign my full-time job and then I'm working for myself now for, well, the last more than a year now. So, um, but I believe, look, some people like jumping, right? So they literally just go like, Okay, I'm just going to quit my job and I'm going to wait for clients to come in. I'm not quite like that. I quite like the idea of stability, saying I have my clients and it's literally just a transition into the next phase, uh, which is I've got the clients already, I'm just leaving the one job and I'm continuing with the self-employment one. That is the stage I want to chat about really quickly is the preparation stage. You had your side hustle, you realized that the work environment that you were in wasn't going to work for you, you had to do something else with your life, right? How did you prepare? What were those backup plans or for backup plans that you had? Okay, so a um, couple of things. The first thing is, I think, financially speaking. Now, I'm very interested in um, working well with your money. I mean, I'm not called frugal by chance, right? So this is very important, is we need to um, plan financially. When you're doing a big jump like this, you need to make sure that you'd be able to survive it, right? And for many people, they say, listen, I'm going to try for three months or six months, and then I'm going to quit, then I'm going to go and find a job again. For me, I had to make sure that I would be okay for the long term. Because in my line of work, business can be very difficult to come by. But as soon as you've got a contract, you've got it for a fairly low, long amount of time. So quite a number of, number of months, number of years. So I had to make sure that in case it goes a little bit quiet in the beginning, that I'd be able to be okay. So I had um, three, three years worth of expenses saved up by the time that I resigned. Three years. I think like you guys know if you watch this YouTube video, this YouTube channel regularly that I talk about emergency funds a lot um, and we always talk about the fact that your emergency fund should be at least three months worth of living expenses which is already quite a substantial amount right so for you to build it up to six months up to a year it, even three years that's that's a lot of work and I say this as someone who has one year worth of expenses and I think that is a lot but three years has to be like the largest amount that I have like considered before why did you think it was so important for you to have such a long runway because that is quite long right like I said like the most advice that we get is three months six months why was it so important for you to have such a huge emergency fund you see, you see, the thing is, if you are employed, it's very different from when you're self-employed or you are an entrepreneur. Um, you don't know how quickly you're going to find a new client. And it's a little bit simpler, quite often, in many, for many people, to find a new job than it is to find a new client. So it's not easy. And um, I, quite, I, mention, I mention it quite often that not everybody should be an entrepreneur. I mean, it is difficult. And if somebody wants to be an employee, that's 100% fine. It's good. Good. Uh, we need employees as well, but we also need entrepreneurs. And for me, I had to make sure that I'm going to be okay. Um, as I've mentioned as well, that in my industry, it can take quite a long time to get a big contract. So for me, I had to make very, very sure that I was going to be okay in case something would happen. So that's how you prepared financially, right? But how did you prepare your business? So I think this is the other thing is a lot of times people just quit and they go like, now I'm going to start finding clients. And, and this is not quite the way that I work. And I don't recommend people doing that. So there's a couple of ways that people do. The first one, which I have done, was that uh, in the previous case was I quit my job because I had a business partner came along and he said, listen, let's do business together. And that didn't quite work out because I was sort of joining his business as a business partner, but he didn't have any of the things that he promised. The next one is that you run two jobs. As a side hustle, you've got your business that you want to take full time. Um, and then you've got your full-time job. So I was literally working full-time and I was working close to 18-hour days, 16, 18-hour days by time. So I'd literally go from the one job to the next one, um, you know, from my full-time job to my side hustle. Um, weekends, yes, I was working weekends as well. I was working very, very hard. 
So um, I think with regards to that, um, there was a lot of preparation in actually finding, so sourcing the clients firstly, secondly, keeping those clients, um, delivering on those clients' needs, and at the time of resigning, I was able to say, listen, I've already have the clients, and now what I'm doing is I'm just transitioning uh, you know, keeping the continuity with that one uh, business and the other one, which is the employment, I told them, see you, bye-bye. I've never really thought about that. Like, I only think about the financial aspect when I think about building a runway. But I think you bring a really important aspect of how many clients do you have? What is the period that you're going to be working with them for? So that's a really in interesting aspect. And outside of that, is there anything else that you, you did to prepare for your jump? I think, let's, I think let's take a step back here and we let, let's talk about the sales pipeline or the, the pipeline, which I like to call it. So a pipeline is very much, you've got things going in on the one end and on the other end you've got things going out. So I pop in clients on this side and I know that my pipeline might take six months before I get a sale, okay? So I know I need to get clients in right now and in six months time I'm going to get money, you know clients and money coming in that's actually gonna convert from an initial contact to a sale. But if we don't keep that going, if we don't keep that going, so okay, I'm gonna keep on popping clients in this side, and I know that uh, out of the amount of clients that I'm popping in this side, I'm gonna have um, this amount of clients that's actually gonna generate money for me on that side, then it's not gonna work. So there's a lot of considerations working for yourself or being an entrepreneur. It might be things like getting the right staff members. So for example, as um, I basically work on a contract basis, so I've got a job uh, for somebody and I get a contract, for, I give a contract to them to do X amount of work and actually pay them for that work. So you need to get the right staff members or people that you're gonna outsource to or know that you've got the skill to do that. If you don't, in that time before you quit your job, you already need to have that um, you need to get the education that you need so that you can do that. Then, as I've mentioned, client acquisition, you need to have a strategy on getting clients in, which I call the pipeline. Then um, you also need to handle all uh, BDSM, business development, sales and marketing. You also need to handle um, accounting. So you need to make sure that you invoice because if you don't invoice, you don't get paid. Um, I don't know if you knew that, but that's sort of, you know, you need to invoice people to get money. So um, there's a lot of moving parts in a business that you need to, to do and to get in place, uh, you know, be able to do like pricing and costing. Like how much do you charge for an on-site meeting with a client versus an online meeting with a client? Um, because sometimes you have to meet with other with the clients' clients, so you need to start thinking um, as these things start happening. How do you cost? How do you price? How you know what is your marketing plan? Um, like all of those things. So all things you need to be thinking about while you're preparing to leave your job. Absolutely. Right. That's Absolutely. a that's a that's a those are a lot of things to to consider and things to learn and prepare. Right. So obviously that takes time. How long did it take you to prepare for your exit? So I should have left within one year, and I left within one year and two months. So, but you need to remember as well is that like I've always enjoyed reading up on these things, on entrepreneurship, on small businesses, and um, it can take you a lot less if you've got the client. Some people have a natural ability to find clients. Uh, for some odd reasons, client, clients find me, which I love. Uh, um, I think that's the perfect situation, right? Absolutely. I mean, because obviously, uh, uh, quite often people go and they're like advertising, spend a lot of money on advertising, but it's just not who they are. But uh, like for me, I put my content out there, I write things and the clients then find me, which like I said, for me, perfect. <laughs> um, I think we've covered everything in terms of preparing. Is there anything else, any nugget that you might have missed there in terms of how you prepared to leave your job? You're going to work hard. You're going to work very, very hard. And I think the, the biggest nugget that I can give people is, you remember, your bank account in personal finance, right? tells you a story of what is important in your life. And in the same way, when you go and you look for, you wanna start your own business, how you spend your time and how you learn and how you grow shows if it really is important. So if you go and you focus on growing your own business, your side hustle, it shows. And then the end is that you're gonna get is actually self-employment or being an entrepreneur and being able to quit your job. Yeah, I like the fact that you pointed that out because I don't think 
a lot of people realize just how much hard work and like resilience it takes to build a business um, because when we talk about like personal finance and financial independence a lot of people are under the impression that if you want to achieve those things and build wealth you have to start a business because that's the only way you really make money but it really isn't that isn't the case there's a lot of different other ways that you can actually make money without being an entrepreneur you have to make sure that entrepreneurship is something that you actually want like you said it is a lot of work it was a lot of work when you're preparing but i'm assuming that it's definitely more work now that you're actually in full-time entrepreneurship well in, in crunch time definitely it's hard work when i resigned i was like okay now i've got so much capacity <laughs> um but i mean i was still actually getting you know fair amount of money in. Um, I think the thing, the, the art of this is that you need to manage your time well and you need to manage your time um, meticulously almost, I want to say, whether it's time that you have crunch time and you need to work really hard and whether it's time that you need to rest. You do need to keep that balance because if you don't rest, then you won't be performing optimally. No, definitely. I, I I can totally understand that. I cannot function without sleep. Um, and now I just want to like touch on like one of the biggest differences for me when between like um, between being an employee and being self-employed is the paying yourself part, right? Because like when you're an employee, you get paid, your pay slip comes and they tell you how much tax they've took off. They've contributed this to your retirement annuity. They've done this and that for your medical aid, right? Like all of these things are kind of like sorted for you, right? You don't necessarily have to think about them as much as you have to as an entrepreneur. So like how has been that, sh how has that shift been in figuring out how much to pay yourself, as well as your taxes, retirement annuities, um, medical aid. How are you handling that as an entrepreneur now? So you need to remember that if you don't invoice, you don't get paid. That's very important. If it's as simple as that. So again, with a pipeline, what you're looking at is you're saying, I'm putting clients in on this side, and I know that I'm going to get money out on that side at this time over this um, time spectrum. Um, but keeping track of who you need to invoice, when you need to invoice them, and how much is still due to you, and when you will get that is very important. Now, personally, I split my business, so my um, company is Effective IPTY Limited, and then my um, the my personal life. I split that with my personal expenses. So as I get money coming into Effectify, that goes to me. You know, money, the money that I need comes to me. Um, and I find that split very important because as soon as I need to now go and, um, you know, I've got a great accounting system and an accounting system, when I give my... Um, my tax person access to it. She can then pull reports from that. She can get everything she needs, um, you know, scanning in receipts so that I know that I've got all the things. Um, but I think automating the stuff as much as you can, so recurring invoices, um, not having to spend time in Excel because that can be a really big nightmare, ask me. <laughs> so, you know, like typing out everything, just saying, listen, I've this invoice, send it out every month for the next year. And I know that it'll just send it out. And as it comes in, um, you just need to recon it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like having a great accounting software is big as a, as a full-time entrepreneur and just having a tax person. You mentioned having a... Absolutely. It's very important having a good tax person um, that understands, uh, like you get different types and um, it's really worth when your business starts growing um, or you having, um, you know, different income and different ways of handling things, especially in accrual accounting. Um, you know, I'm more on a cash flow accounting base, but especially when it gets a bit more complicated, you need somebody to be able to help you to say, this is the way that you need to structure it. This is the way you need to work with it. Because obviously you want to legally pay as little tax as possible. Um, and also, look, there are certain expenses that you can deduct from tax, which people don't always say as an entrepreneur. So for example, if I have a business expense, i.e. I'm taking somebody out for lunch or dinner and we're talking business, that is a business expense, an entertainment cost that I go on. You know, we're talking, for example, uh, whether it's frugal with, um, you know, cr uh, content creation and sponsored posts. Um, connecting with those people, those I can deduct from tax legally because it's making me money. And especially when I'm driving to clients, I'm deducting my petrol from, you know, from my clients. So it's so important that you've got a good tax person that can explain these things to you and tell you what you can and cannot deduct because we want to be honest we want to do the right thing and pay as little as possible 
while doing so. Legally. <laughs> legally. legally. That is the key word there, legally. Um, I like that you, you spoke about like receipts and just keeping a record of everything, right? Which ties back to the accounting software that we spoke about again. And I think for me as a side hustle, I have a, I use accounting software and I think it's, it's been so crucial in my business and managing the money and where everything is at. And I'm assuming as an, a full-time entrepreneur with more business coming in and a lot more time that you're spending there, it even it's an even bigger asset for you. Look, I mean, um, I think what happens with many people is some people when they start out, I mean, I started out and my invoices was done in Photoshop. I know people are twitching, not even Excel, not even Excel. I didn't Photoshop at the time. Um, but the problem with that is, is that as soon as your business grows to a certain point, you can't do that anymore. So, and it's okay to do that in the beginning. It's okay to do it in Excel in the beginning, but there's a point that you're gonna reach that you need an accounting software, a piece of accounting software. Um, especially when you've got lots of receipts, you've got people you need to pay. Uh, sometimes it's even when you start hiring people and you've got payroll, when it is you have, uh, you know, stock management inventory and you've got all of these things that you need to manage and you've got payment terms such as 60 or 90 day payment terms and managing all of that on an Excel spreadsheet or in Photoshop is really... It'll make you pull your hair out. And it's, <laughs> it's just worth just getting something decent to help you exactly exactly that's why i use sage by the way guys obviously this video is sponsored by sage i've been working with them for months now so y'all should all know that we work with sage on this channel <laughs> but i think they're like it makes their software just makes it so simple to manage everything and be, and be able to set up like especially the recurring invoices i find them very valuable because you don't have to remember that oh i need to invoice this person now oh that invoice is late they actually notify you of things like that and i think that's just awesome I'll also just leave a, like, a link to Sage in the description as well. So check it out. Also, maybe in the first comment. I don't know, guys. Check out the description. You'll find the link to Sage. Um, but yeah, and then like we've spoken about like managing your money now as a full-time entrepreneur. And I'm sure there's a lot of lessons that you've learned on this journey. It's two years, almost two years of you doing this, right? So there's obviously a lot of lessons that you've learned. And I just want you to give us maybe a couple that you can share with my audience in terms of something that you learned that you're not necessarily aware of when you started that you wish you, you knew before. What I find is that many employees, um, when they do side hustles, they tend to undercharge. Like I was undercharging and I believe that if you're doing the work, you should be getting the money. Okay. So in the same way with me, now that I'm self-employed, uh, I basically, if I'm spending time on it, I should get money for it. Okay. But also the value added part of that. So for example, if this thing, the solution, which I worked three weeks on is worth exponentially more than my time, I negotiate with the clients. Okay. This is the price I am worth the money that I get and I can negotiate the terms of that and the very important thing that why I'm saying that is that certain clients I've told I'm not interested in their business and I've said in a very nice way that they I say things like um, you know my business goals are not aligning with yours so it wouldn't be fair for me to take this job on um, and it's okay to say no it's very important to say no and that's the one thing that I've learned the other thing that I've learned is that your business needs to evolve with you so, so this is the thing is that you need to put one foot in front of the other right um and yes i shall say that working for yourself is freedom um sorry i just had to put that out there but uh i find that you know your business needs to grow with you and it's so important that you start optimizing your business one step at a time going forward and as you refine who you are and what your business does you know what you know what clients is that you're looking for so it's very important to keep on refining so that you can find your ideal client, so that you know what you're offering, so that you can give the clients the best service. There's so much, and I, I like the fact that like on your blog, you, you specifically talk about business. You have a whole section on business. So if people want to learn about small businesses, running their small businesses in a lean way, I think that is something that you're also really passionate about, is running your business as effectively as possible with the minimum uh, products that you have or resources that you have. So definitely check out Frugal Locals blog. Where do we find your blog? Localmoney.co.za 
And if you're really lazy, you can go to frugallocal.co.za, which will redirect you there. <laughs> you can also follow Frugal Local on Twitter. I will leave his handles in the description as well. But like I said, guys, he is on this journey. He started with his business as a side hustle. Now it's a full-time business. And I cannot wait to see what comes down the line in the coming year, in the coming five years, because I think there's only bigger and better things to come from. Absolutely. I think, remember, I think this, these are very small steps to freedom that we take. <laughs> Please leave a comment down below. Let Fro know that his information is just so valuable. Um, but I don't want to take too much of your time, Frugal. It has been a long day. So I'm going to end our video here. And hopefully I can have you join us once again. Definitely. I would love to chat to you again. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. And please remember, like, subscribe. Dislike if you didn't like the video. It's still engagement. Anyway, thank you so much, guys. And I will see you in my next video next week. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>